Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebane. This is our how to make a t-shirt quilt video tutorial series. This was actually the very first series I ever did on YouTube, but we decided it was time to remake it now that we like have actual cameras and lighting and a set and all those good things. The content is still great. The videography on a cell phone camera in my living room, not so much. So we're gonna redo all that for you guys here today. And if you are following along in real time as we're releasing the videos, you will be able to finish this in time to gift it for graduation parties this May. I know that's a really big reason why people make t-shirt quilts, also retirements, a lot of that happens before summer. So follow along, you'll be able to finish it if you follow along with us in real time. But we're gonna have these videos up forever so you can absolutely watch them to make them anytime. All right, so today's video is going to be about how to choose your fabric to coordinate with your t-shirts that you're using. So to start with that, I'm actually gonna show you some of the ones that I've made and talk you through my fabric decisions. So this is the very first t-shirt quilt that I did and I did it on camera with you guys many, many years ago when we started this YouTube channel. And these were my high school t-shirts and my mascot was a bee. It was Zion Benton, we were the ZBs. It was not very intimidating, but it's what we had and we loved it. And so I have all these shirts that have bees on them and hornets and things that are gonna go, you know, sting you or whatever. And so it made a whole lot of sense to have some bee fabric for my sashing because it just it fit, the theme fit. So sometimes you're really lucky and you're able to find fabric that matches with whatever the theme of the shirt is. Like if you have somebody who is a runner and you're doing a t-shirt quilt of all of their race shirts, you might be able to find some running fabric or some shoe fabric or something like that that you could do. Um, also in this is our school colors were yellow and maroon. And so we've got a lot of yellow in this bee fabric and then I use maroon solid for my cornerstones. So it was really great. I was able to work really well with everything and it provided really good contrast because I didn't have too many shirts that were like yellow. Most of them were white, black, gray, and this maroon. And so it worked really well to be able to have this yellow fabric because it fit with the colors, but it wasn't overwhelming in that way. And even when I do have yellow, it's a very bright yellow and this is more of a pastel yellow. And so it just isn't as crazy. You know, it works really well with all the shirts that are in here. And that's a lot easier when you're doing stuff for like a school because they're gonna have their school colors. You can find fabric that works with those school colors that will help pull that out. Sometimes you can find the theme and it works really well. So next up, we have the t-shirt quilt that I made using my t-shirts from my sorority in college. Our colors were red and white, so the sassing choice was pretty obvious from there. Obviously, I was gonna go with red and white. Now, here's the challenge. Um, when you have red and you also have red shirts, don't even try to match it. What you should do is you should find a fabric that has a couple of different reds in it and then that way, no matter what red your shirt is, because probably they're all gonna be a little different, it's gonna work. So this is like a mottled red. It's not a red solid. That way there's a couple of different hues of red within it. So it's gonna look good next to my red shirts and my red screen printing ink, even if it's not the exact red. Uh, we also wore camo a lot, so we totally could have gone with something like that. But the red and white was what I remembered as, as much as I could. And also think a little bit outside of the box with the sashing. So for this one, I had a bunch of uh, shirts where we had really skinny writings on them. And so I used that as sashing in some places to sort of replace that. And I did have to put fusible interfacing behind this, but here we've got one here. We've got another one down here. And so I placed those strategically. They kind of go in an angle down the quilt, but they look really fun. And they're just a little something extra to put in there and sort of mix up that color a little more. But you can see like this red, it's not the exact same red as this writing, but it's close enough. And because there is different reds within the fabric, you're gonna work out just fine. Now this satin choice is really out of the box. What I did here was I used my husband's pajama pants as the sashing. And before you think I cut up good pajama pants, 
they were not. The final straw was our neighbor was over and he leans back and does that mansplaining thing where the knees come open and I can see all his business and the neighbor is right there in our living room. And I am like, I'm cutting them up, they're going in a quilt. And so I picked, I think it was two, maybe three pairs of pajama pants that I cut out to use sashing with. And I did have to use interfacing on the back of them because this flannel was like kind of stretchy and this fabric here was a little bit thin, um, but they were line eye pajama pants, they were perfect. And he thought they were lost in the wash until I gave this to him on Christmas day. Um, also, I sourced all the t-shirts um, either from Goodwill or I bought them secondhand somewhere. I was trying to find ones that either looked really cool like this one or were from when they won championships, which if you are an Illini fan, you know that those are a little few and far between to come upon, but I made sure to do that. And I ended up finding one really cool vintage one from like the eighties that he still wears because I looked at it and I was like, I just have to give him this one. He's gonna wanna wear it. But I had a lot of fun finding those shirts and getting them together, but you don't always have to go with something that you buy. You may have, you know, something else extra. If you've got like sweatpants or something, you might be able to do the, the whole top from that. I did buy uh, a line eye licensed fabric for my cornerstones and for my binding. And so that kind of helped tie it all together. But if you do something like this, be aware that you probably are going to need extra interfacing because you are going to need to put it behind your sashing strips as well, because you're not working with quilting cotton and it may not behave the way it needs to. It may stretch out a lot. So the first thing you wanna do is kind of lay out all your shirts and take a look at the colors that you're working with and see if there are any main themes here. I can see already here that I have a lot of blue. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six blue shirts. Some of these I've already cut and fused. So of my 16, about a third of them are gonna be blue. So that's a lot. So that's maybe something I wanna consider. White, I feel like there's a lot of, but there's always gonna be a lot of white in t-shirt quilts as well as like gray. That really can go with almost anything unless you have like some main themes through it. A little bit of pink, a little bit of red, a little bit of black and a green. And so what I think I might almost do here is go with some blue and teal because teal is my favorite color and we have a lot of blue in here. So I've got behind me a basics line. Basics are fabulous to use for t-shirt quilts because they really are usually only gonna have one or two main colors in them. And so you're gonna be able to pick based on the color more than the design. Unless it's of course, it's a situation where like you want bees because the bee is your mascot like in my um, high school t-shirt quilt. So let's pull some from behind. This is Bijou by Gazal Razivi from Figo Fabrics. All right, so I pulled a couple of colors here. I'm just gonna put them over and kind of see what I think. Um, this one definitely goes, but it's really dark. So I don't know how this is gonna go against my darker print. So we're gonna see what else we've got. This it just is my personal favorite color, but it doesn't look like there is that much of that in this quilt. So this might not be the right choice. This one is looking like a very good candidate because of all of the blue that we have in here. And I think that that will look really nice with the blue that is in here. So we'll leave that out, that's looking pretty good. And now we're gonna look at the gray. And gray is, is a neutral, goes with a lot of things. So I think that this might also be a really good opportunity to use it here. I almost feel like I might wanna use this for my sashing. The sashing is a longer part and the cornerstone is going to be your little square. So because this is not my favorite color, this just happens to be all of the colors, a lot of the t-shirts are this color. I think I would rather use gray um, as my sashing and this is my little pop of color for those cornerstones because this is going to work really well with all of the shirts and then this one is going to pick up when we do have blue in them which we do have in a lot of the shirts so I think I made my decision and you you know maybe you have the luxury of going to a quilt shop near you but if you're looking online just lay everything out and pull up some windows on your browser take a look see what uh you're going with this i'm going to go grab one other collection too that i think would make a really fabulous um option for this as far as sashing is concerned so this collection is called game night 
and it's really pretty and it has a lot of really fun prints that work as blenders even though they kind of have a lot going on in them because you've got just three colors in this print. You've got purple, black, and white. So it's a really good way to get some fun texture into those prints, but without overwhelming anything. So any of these ones here that are the primary colors, those would be absolutely fantastic to use if you are looking for sashing and cornerstone ideas. This one kind of has a lot going on as do these, but then we also have some good amount of the gray that could for work just like I'm using my gray here. Here's another one that's great. This is Daydreaming by Stephanie Brandenburg. This one has a lot of like painterly textures, but why it works for a t-shirt quilt is while there is model texture, it is great because it has like just those couple of colors in it. So that way, you know, like this green looks really good with that. So does these, this blue you know, that works with a lot of the t-shirts and it's gonna look a lot like the fabric I chose for my college quilt that has that red modeled look where it doesn't have to match perfectly, but it is gonna work with what you've got. Um, so this would be like a really good option for this quilt if we use, say this one um, in there somewhere. So these are the types of collections that you wanna look for. We have a lot available on our website. It's constantly changing. If you watch this video a year from now, we're not gonna have any of these fabrics. So what you wanna do is just look for ones that don't have a lot going on. So the focus can be on the t-shirt design and you're just really seeing the color in those sashing and cornerstone strips or go with something that's themed. You know, if you are able to find something that is like their favorite thing, like maybe they love butterflies and you can find some butterfly fabric that is gonna kind of work with everything that's going on in the quilt. That's a good option. Or theme to the mascot or theme to the theme of the shirts, like, you know, races. If you're able, if someone who bikes a lot and you're able to find bike fabric, those are all things that you wanna kind of look for when you are picking out fabric for those sashing and cornerstones. So I hope that helps. I hope it helps you narrow it down and doesn't complicate it more especially seeing some examples of how it actually has been done in some quilts that I have made. All right, next up, we're gonna actually start cutting open our shirts and getting the interfacing on. <laughs> 